Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of the Bubbles in Paris podcast. My name is Aude and I am coming to you from Edinburgh in Scotland and I've got a lot to share today. It's been a few weeks since my last episode and yeah things have just been busy. I haven't been able to record until now but I've still had time to knit, to knit and to sew a little bit and so I have quite a bit to um, show you. So. Let's get started. I will start with a finished object. I have um, one, two, three, four, four knitting finished object and one sewing finished object. I then have two works in progress, both knitting. And then I have just a couple of acquisitions. And then I will also announce the giveaway winner because I did a giveaway in my previous episode to celebrate um, I think it was to celebrate the 2000 subscribers uh, milestone. Uh, we're way above 3000 now, but still, it's really fun. I'm really grateful for all of you who have subscribed. And so I was really happy to do this giveaway and I will announce the winner uh, towards the end of the episode. Um, yeah, so go ahead, grab yourself a nice beverage and your knitting. I'm having some green tea today. And we will get started. Um, right, so finished object. I'm going to start with the obvious, which is what I'm wearing now. And that is my Lento. So I think I had, well, I know I had it uh, on my needles the last time and I'd shown it a bit and talked about it a bit, but it is now finished. It has been finished for quite a while and I have worn it quite a bit. It is a lovely sweater. I really love it. It is one of my favorites. And yeah, it's finished. I will, instead of standing up, because I don't have a lot of room um, to sort of, I don't have enough room to like stand up and still be uh, in the frame, I will show some pictures right here of uh, me wearing it and I will tell you all about it. So I have my iPad here where I have my Ravelry page um, and I will, so like I said, it was the Lento. I. I kind of wanted to knit a lento for a while, didn't really know when, how, or any of that. And then, um, like I said the last time, my friends from Knit Night and I decided to um, kind of take part in the lento, knit along the Let's Lento, which is, it's over now. That was hosted by Rebecca of the Crea Bear and Amy Palco of The Meaningful Stitch. And so we all knit a lento and actually we met last week for Knit Night and we were all wearing it. And it was just, it was a lot of fun because we all picked different colors. We all sort of did it a bit differently. Like when my friend did it like quite cropped. Um, another did it like um, more to pattern. So slightly cropped and slightly shorter sleeves. Mine is like full length, full sleeves. Another friend didn't do the folded neckline. And so had like a, almost like a funnel neck, which was really beautiful as well. So yeah, it was, it was really fun. Um, if you like, you couldn't really tell, well, unless you were knitting and you knew the lento and all of this, you couldn't really tell that we were all wearing the same sweater. So that, yeah, that was fun. So anyway, uh, the lento, uh, it is a pattern by Jonah Yatala, I think. She works at Liner Magazine. It was in one of the Liner Magazine issues from, I don't remember when, but I think it is available now as a single pattern, pattern on Ravelry. And I knit mine out of... Uh, one strand of woolly knit British wool cone in the shade smoke grey and then one strand of drops brushed alpaca silk I think it's called. Um, it is a pattern that is intended to have a loose gauge so you are the pattern calls for a strand of DK, a strand of no a strand of sorry uh, fingering and a strand of mohair so kind of like a DK weight but knit on six millimeter needles. I kind of did that. The woolly knit is a light fingering, so it's still a fingering but a bit thinner and the uh, the drops brushed alpaca silk is not a lace really, it's more a fingering weight as well. So I think I had a, I also had kind of a DK, maybe a bit more, maybe a bit thicker than a DK and I like that. Um, for the drops alpaca, um, I got the shade off-white, shade number one. I was concerned, I think I mentioned it before because in the when they're all packaged together, I think I bought six skeins and I used five and something. When they're all together in the package, they look kind of 
beige or like on the creamy side the white was on the creamy side and I I wasn't sure it was gonna look great, uh, great with the gray yarn I thought maybe it was gonna make it look a bit muddy or something like that but it really like it really doesn't I don't know if you can um, see here like even like worn on me it's um, yeah it just looks like a nice pearly gray which is exactly what I was what I was looking for in terms of how much I use because the Lento doesn't use a lot of yarn and or doesn't need to use a lot of yarn depending on how cropped you make it and even so because it's a DK ish weight yarn on large needles it actually really doesn't use that much so I made mine and you will have seen, you will have seen other pictures but I'll show you here like the, the sleeves are quite like full length and the the body is full length as well like it goes just like on my hip bone which is what I consider to be full length um, and so I'm on the like I used like on the spectrum of how much yarn you, how much yarn you could use for Lento I'm on like the end where you could use a bit more and so I used um, 165 grams of the woolly knit fingering weight 770 meters and then I used 128 grams of the alpaca silk 716 meters so it's still very little yarn like you could do like if you have yeah like if you have two skeins of of fingering weight like a, a nice maybe uh, hand dyed or something like 200 grams um and then you add like a mohair or an alpaca or something then you could definitely have like a full full length everything um jumper and then if you make it crop then you need even less yarn so I think that's really brilliant for that um, like I said I have worn it quite a bit I really like it it's very lightweight because the gauge is so loose and flowy and there's actually not that much wool in it um, but it is also very warm because of the brushed alpaca silk so yeah I would really really recommend this pattern um, yeah, there was something else I wanted to say and I just thought about it and now it's gone from my brain. Um, oh yes, yeah, yes, I remember. Um, so the pattern calls for 6mm needles. Um, I swatched on 6mm needles and I got gauge on 6mm needles, but I found the fabric a little bit too airy. I'm not a massive fan of um, very loose gauge. Um, it's just preference, it's just like an aesthetic thing, I just, I don't personally like the look of it so much and on six millimeters even though I had gauge it was just the fabric wasn't really doing it for me so I went down to 5.5 and it worked perfectly like yes it made the jumper a little bit smaller but that also worked for me because I ended up making size 2 um, based on the ease that the pattern recommends size 1 would have been too small like it would it would have fit me but it would have had only like maybe 10 centimeters of positive ease and I think the pattern recommended maybe 12 or 15 so size one would have been a bit too small to get the recommended ease which is what I wanted and size two would have been too large it would have given me like maybe 20 centimeters which was a bit too much so I think by going down to a 5.5 I like reduced the size of the whole garment a little bit and I think I got somewhere close to the ease that the pattern recommended or and a positive ease that I like. I like it a lot. So it worked out really well for me. Um, there's not, I don't know what is it, what it is with the pattern. There seems to be a wider gap in, in the measurement in between size one and size two compared to in between size two and three or three and four. So I don't know, maybe, I, I don't know what, but I was kind of like in that weird in between and going down half a needle size just made it work for me. So yeah, just a tip, a tip if that's something that happens to you as well. Um, why not try it out um, again it's just like a it's a raglan sweater too so if you like you can I guess start and then like if you need more space under the armpits if you want more ease at the body or whatever you can just keep knitting the raglan increases or stop knitting them when it fits you and it will be fine it's a very very easy pattern to um, modify and make it fit for you so yeah do I have anything else to say about this pattern? Um, I don't think so. It was really fun to knit. It was really quick to knit. 
and um, because there was a, a knit along that went with it, if you go on Instagram and search for the hashtag Let's Lento, you will see everyone's versions and I think it's really fun, especially for inspiration or if you want to make one yourself, like you can see all the different options for the sweater, all the different colors, all the different yarn combinations and yeah, it was it was really fun. I really enjoyed it and I will definitely make another Lento in the future. I have some yarn in my stash that would work great and yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's just a very nice, very easy everyday sweater for me and I really enjoy wearing it. So yeah, that's that. Let's move on to finished object number two. Just gonna have a sip of tea before it gets cold. All right, so finished object number two. I have also shown it in um, my previous episode and the one before that, I believe. And so I will just show it quickly. And it is um, my blanket. <laughs> this is my Radvan throw that I made um, with my advent calendar from last year, from December 2022. I got the advent from the Kami yarn with 12 mini skeins and one main skein. I also got hold of an extra four mini skeins from that advent calendar, so I had 16 mini skeins to work with. And so I made 16 squares. I'm not going to go into a lot of details about this project because I did the last episode, but just very briefly, the pattern is the Rat of Throw by Emma O'Brien. I will, I will put a picture on the side. Um, and it's basically you knit squares and then you join the squares together. What I did is that I made the squares bigger so I could use up all of the mini and not have any leftover. It's very easy because you start your square in the middle and then knit in the round so you can just keep going. Um, this is what this, the square looks like. And then, um, and then yeah, you join them and uh, voila. So um, the pattern says to crochet the squares together with a, another kind of yarn to join them and then crochet and then I think knit a border around in garter stitch. I was not going to do the border because I didn't think it looked too nice or it wasn't to my taste anyway, but I was going to just crochet the squares together and then do like a, a simple crochet border. I had the yarn picked for, for that and everything. It's not yarn that I bought, it's stuff that I had in my stash, but when I started doing it, I just didn't really like the look of it. it what it did is that like at the join here between two squares, it just it made it very bulky and I just I didn't like the look of, I just didn't like the look of it and so I ended up after a lot of thinking <laughs> I ended up deciding just to sew the squares together and not have an additional color or border or anything so I thankfully I had just tiny bits of leftover like a gram or something of some yarn so I could sew it with the same color as one of the two squares that were being joined together so that it would be pretty much invisible um, and this is what it looks like. Um, I realize now that I haven't shown you the whole blanket. I will put a, um, I will put a picture of the whole blanket here because I, I don't think I can I have the space to show it um, on the screen but this is what the join looks like and this is the back. I don't know if it yeah you can kind of see it like the stitch on the back and yeah I just did it like this for the whole blanket let me let me try um, to show it yeah it's, it's not the best I'll, ha I'll add like a video or a picture but um, yeah it's got a nice size I don't let me see if I wrote exactly how much it um how big it is but it's it's not like it's not a blanket that would go on the bed because it's definitely not uh, big enough but it is um yeah i think it's about like 120 centimeters um per side it's a squ it's square and yeah and so that's all i did for the like i didn't do a border as you saw i just like sewed the squares together i sewed an extra stitch um, like I did a little stitch and a little knot at the 
at the edge here just so that it wouldn't pull on it too much and it would be quite sturdy and um, yeah this is what it looks like I'm really really happy with how it turned out I'm really happy that I ended up not using a different color for the border because yeah I don't know it was just like there was something off with it that I personally didn't really like and so um, yeah I'm, I'm just I'm just glad I did it this way it, re it worked really well for me um, I think there's lots and lots of ways to join squares um, out there on the internet but I like the way I did it and uh, yeah I've really enjoyed this blanket I have it on my chair where I work so that I can have it on my lap when it gets a bit cold and yeah it's been really enjoyable the cats have tried to claim it but I haven't let them because it's mine <laughs> and I don't want it to be covered in cat hair so um, yeah all right so um, that was finished object number two finished object number three I also mentioned it in oops excuse me that's the post all right we're back that was just a post um so the finished object number three I talked about it in my previous episode I had started it but not finished and it was these um harvest season mittens by Albiona McLaughlin um I think I had maybe one done and then the other one half half done I'm gonna put them on uh, the yarn that I used I, I don't know what it is it's yarn that I had in my stash it was gifted to me um, and it didn't have any tags or anything it is it is wool um, I was saying I was saying last time I think maybe Gotland and something but yeah it is it is very nice it is very soft but also very warm and this is what they look like on my hands um, yeah, they're very nice and very warm and very comfortable. You might think that because it's lace, it's not super warm and it actually is. Like it's, it's actually surprisingly warm. I was a bit skeptical at first as well, but it is surprisingly warm. Um, if it's very windy, I mean, wool does that, right? Like if it's super windy, wool might not be the best, but honestly, like when it's just cold, these work great. And then when it's windy, I have other gloves that I run, that I wear. Um, underneath like windproof gloves that I wear underneath so yeah let me take them off and see if I have anything else to say about those um they oops dropped something they didn't take a lot of yarn at all uh, let me grab the Ravelry page yeah they didn't take a lot of yarn at all they took 39 grams so like 40 grams if you have like you could definitely make them out of like leftover maybe from a pair of socks I feel like I don't know I guess it would depends on um, your shoe size but you can easily have <clears throat> sorry you can easily have about 40 grams left after a pair of socks or I don't know any any yarn that you have or a couple of minis maybe and I did on three millimeter needles which I think is what the the pattern calls for and yeah I am I wrote that the yarn that I use was a sport weight <clears throat> oh excuse me I'm gonna have a sip of tea yeah I wrote that on my Ravelry that the yarn that I had was a sport weight because I kind of feel like that's what it is I it feels slightly too thick to be a fingering weight but also definitely not a DK but on, I don't know, I honestly don't know. But yeah, really lovely. I like them a lot. And it's been it's been quite cold again, so I have been able to um, to wear them. Um, the only thing is that I have to like take them off if I want to look at something on my phone or take a picture with my phone or something. But it's all right. It's just like that's kind of you know that's going to happen if you make mittens, right? Um, so yeah. The Harvest Season Mittens by Albiona McLaughlin. I know, I think she has a hat and a shawl, possibly, and maybe in a cowl, maybe, that have this um, this pattern on it, which is really nice. And it's quite easy to make, too, so I might, I might make those in the future. We'll see. I'm not really sure. But yeah. Moving on. Fourth and last knitting finished object is... Um, 
something that I hadn't started in the last podcast, but I have now started it and finished it, and it is a Sophie scarf. So I'm sure you know all about the Sophie scarves because everyone has made it. But um, this is this is mine. Um, let me see. So this is the yarn, and this is the scarf. It's folded in half now, obviously. Um, but yeah, it is it is really nice. And so um, this scarf I wanted to make out of. Um, the main skein for my advent calendar. This was the last thing that I wanted to do so I could use up all the yarn from my advent calendar from last year and I wanted to use all of it. So it's a 100 gram skein. It was fingering weight so I held it double because I think that's kind of what the pattern calls for. It's, it's definitely not the yarn for recommended in the pattern. I think it's actually quite different and it's also a lot more of it. I think the pattern calls for maybe like 25 or 50 grams of yarn or something like that. So, um, yeah, so it is, I followed the pattern of the Sophie scarf, but my scarf doesn't have the same size at all. Let me, let me put it on. I kind of like it. I wasn't sure I would like it because it's a bit like, it's not like the super small scarf that of the original Sophie scarf. It's also not very thick or very big. And I was like, oh, maybe it's the weird in between, but it's actually not. It's a nice, it's a nice in between. It's like, it's not. It's not the warmest thing out there, so if it's really like freezing cold, maybe not the best, but when it's a bit cold that you want to wear a scarf, but not so cold that you would want to be like all bundled up, I think it's really great. Like it's small enough that I can zip up my coat like almost um, to the top and it's not super bulky. So yeah, I like it a lot. Um, so what I did is that um, I held my yarn double which I think is what the pattern calls for. I knit it on four millimeter needles because of it just felt right to me. I think the pattern maybe calls for 3.5 or 3.25. I'm not really sure. Um, yeah, I did it on four. I didn't swatch or anything. It just felt right for me to do it on four and I'm, I'm really happy with it. And then I knit all the increases the way uh, Petite Knit says to do. And then I, I think I think in the pattern you do the decrease the increases and then you go straight into the decreases so it's more like a, a bit of a triangle um i didn't do that so i did the increases i was happy with the width that i had when i reached the last increase i, I was fully open to like increasing more if i thought the scarf was too thin or maybe stop earlier if i thought it was getting too wide but for me it is like this is where the increase um and and i think the width is just fine and so what i did after that is before starting the decreases i just knit straight and so i have this like straight section in the middle so i kept knitting 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 until i got i had about 50 grams of yarn left and then or no actually i what did i do oh yeah so i i knit up until the last increase weight my yarn so i knew how much i'd used for this like triangle section and then which i think was maybe like 35 grams or something then i knit straight until i had about 35 grams of yarn left and then i decreased and yeah and then i didn't have any yarn left at the end so that was good no no leftover and yeah, I think there's all it's all there is to say about this. It's it's really easy um, uh, project. Uh, I know a lot of people, uh, not a lot of people, but a few people have said it's not actually that mindless because you have to count rows to when you do uh, your increase or your decrease. I didn't really think it was a problem. Like I think it was fairly mindless still. I didn't need to keep the pattern with me. Like I just put a marker where I did the uh, previous. Um, increase or decrease and then like that allowed me to count until I needed to do the until I needed to do the next so that really really wasn't a problem for me I thought it was quite enjoyable quite quick and I'm happy to have used up this kind of yarn and yeah it might be something that I make again uh, to use up like single skeins that I might have or I might look for other patterns that call for just one skein of fingering weight or one skein of DK but in this case, I'm really happy with it. The edge is the um, 
it's an i cord bind up uh not a bind up just an i cord edge and i think it looks really nice um and i think it also means that it kind of keeps its length like it prevents it from stretching out too much and yeah that is my um my sophie scarf um my way i guess <laughs> it's somewhere in between the regular one and the like the sophie scarf and the sophie um shawl um but yeah i think so many people have adapted this pattern to what they wanted to do or what yarn they had and it's always worked out really well so yeah i've been wearing it quite a bit now because i mean this past few days has been really really cold again so i've been wearing like warmer things but just before that it was milder and um oh there's hair everywhere and yeah it's been it's been really nice i've really enjoyed it the yarn like i said was the um main skein of my advent calendar by Zakami yarn it's a skein of 100 percent corydale and i don't find it itchy at all it's not it doesn't have that um it doesn't have the smoothness of a superwash merino which some people would say is almost a bit like plasticky which i can i i don't mind it but i can i can see it um but yeah it feels um i don't know how to say it, it feels like a rustic yarn but it's not itchy it can it's kind of like non-superwash merino feels like rustic yarn but it's not itchy it's the same so yeah for me corydale is definitely not itchy it's lovely fiber and some one that i would use for scarves and hats and things like that so yeah that's it about the sophie scarf and so these are i hope i'm not going too fast but that's kind of all i have to say about those things so yeah um so that is all of my knitting finished object i have one sewing finished object which i'm gonna grab it is uh, it is black so it might um mess up with the lighting a bit but if you remember maybe in my last episode in the acquisition i'd shown some fabric that i bought um a black viscose jersey that I wanted to use to make black t-shirts. I made white t-shirts, I showed them last time and I just wanted to make the same in black and in a viscose jersey instead of a cotton jersey that is viscose is a lot more drapey. And so this is what we have. Um, it is a proper black. I think the light is making it look a bit gray or faded or something, but um, yeah, it is, it looks, I'm really happy with it. I don't remember, I think I'd ordered I think maybe I ordered two meters of fabric. I don't remember exactly. I got uh, three three t-shirts out of it, which is which is great. Um, they're very very comfortable, very soft, very drapey. Um, because it's viscose, they do require ironing. If that's something that you care about, because they come up wrinkly quite a bit. Like viscose just does that. It it, it wrinkles. It um, yeah. That's just what it is. It's the um, it's the nature of the fabric. Um, I Everything has been sewn with the overlocker, you can see here. And then I did some stitching here and then the hems at the armholes and at the sleeves, I mean, and then at the bottom I did with the twin needle on my sewing machine. The pattern that I used is uh, the same as the last time. It's um, from, it's a pattern called Briac. It's from a sewing book uh, called Coudre le Stretch. It's a, it's a French book and there's lots and lots of uh, t-shirt patterns basically and lots of ways to make them different with uh, like various necklines like v-neck, round neck, crew neck, um, various like sleeve length and all of this. It's a really good book for that but there's loads and loads of basic t uh, sewing patterns out there um, in English as well if that's what you would, might be looking for. Um, I enjoy wearing those t-shirts quite a lot. Um, the sewing of them was well, actually not the sewing. The sewing of them went really well. The cutting of the fabric though, like you can see how drapey and flowy and everything it is. I don't usually have an issue with viscose. Like viscose is quite a slippery fabric. It's very fluid, very flowy. Um, and so it can be difficult in some cases to sew so with. I have never had any problem with uh, woven viscose, so non-stretchy 
viscous I actually really like working with that I really like the finished garment I think it's a really nice fabric to wear it's very comfortable but this one I don't know if it's because it's knit I don't know if it's because it's quite thin but oh my god it was just it was such such a pain to cut it was just like slip around and I don't I used up all the pins that I had just to keep it in place keep the the pattern piece onto the fabric and yeah it worked out in the end like, there's no problem at all it worked out in the end also jersey knit fabrics are very forgiving when it comes to fit and you can adjust a lot like while you sew but yeah the cutting of the fabric was a bit of an adventure so <laughs> yeah uh, still, I'm very happy with it. Like I said, it's quite thin and I'm curious to, like, while it's very comfortable, I'm curious to see how it's going to wear. I'm mildly concerned that it's not going to wear super well. I feel like it's the kind of fabric that might be prone to getting, like, little holes in it, like little snatches if you, like, it gets caught in a zipper or something. But, um, we'll see. I'm, I'm always quite careful when I wash it. I'm, like, anything viscous that I have, I'm careful when I wash it. I usually either do a delicate cycle on the washing machine with all my viscose thing on it, in it, or I wash it with on the wool uh, cycle when I do like socks and things. Uh, just like a cycle that has a very low spinning because I think spinning is what um, damages the viscose the most. Um, but yeah, overall quite very happy with those t-shirts and covered in cat hair as is everything in this house um yeah very happy with them um i enjoy wearing them quite a lot if i didn't have white t-shirts already that i made the time like the previous time out of cotton jersey i might consider making some out of viscose jersey but right now i think i have what i need for now when it comes to t-shirts so yeah that is all of my finished objects I don't know if you can hear the cat, she's meowing behind the door or more quacking. She quacks more than she meows this one, but I'm not going to let her in because there's too much stuff everywhere. And um, yeah. Sorry to everyone who wants to see the cats, but there, there's a lot of yarn and a lot of threads and I don't really want them chewing on anything and having any, um, like getting sick or having any problems. So. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Um, moving on to works in progress. So I have two knitting works in progress. Um, and I actually have a sewing work in progress. Let me start with that. So this is my sewing work in progress. This is what it looks like now because I just have the pieces cut but they're not sewn together. Uh, I am making a shirt or a blouse based off of the Aloha dress by Apolline Patterns. I will put a picture here of the dress. Um, I have made this dress before. I have two versions of it that I wore a lot last summer. I was going to say last winter. You don't wear dresses like that in winter in Scotland. Um, so last summer and I really, really like them. I really like the fit of them. And so I decided to make a blouse or shirt version of it which is basically the same thing just shorter and so what i'm making it with is so the fabric that i had is this one it's kind of it's a cotton it's, it's not a double gauze but it kind of looks like it like the the, the texture um and so yeah i had this in my stash in order to make a top and i thought it would be quite fitting for this one the only thing is, uh, sorry, is that um, it is quite, I don't know if you can see it, maybe a bit, it is quite sheer. And um, I was worried that it was going to be maybe a bit too sheer. I have one of those um, like invisible bras that actually is quite invisible under like slightly sheer or like, like not sheer, but like kind of pale colored fabrics. But even that, I don't think it, would, it was going to do it with uh, this particular fabric. So what I'm doing is that I have some leftover uh, white viscose from a previous project. And so I'm going to line the whole shirt with it. And so this is the white viscose. It's very drapey, very flowy. And so um, I'm going to help them hold them 
together um this this bit that i'm showing you is just a bit of scrap that i'm keeping on the side for uh just to like run it under the sewing machine just to make sure everything is fine to try buttonholes on and everything but um uh, yeah i think the two together makes it like it's still very flowy and very drapey and i don't think it does a lot to it doesn't make the whole garment heavy or stiff at all but it, it does do something to like it improves the opacity i think that's the word i'm looking for so yeah this is what i'm making it's kind of hard to show like sewing like in progress sewing project because like yeah there's not much to sew to show especially if they have not been sewn together just yet but yeah right now i just have like all my pieces cut and um yeah i'm, I'm ready to go so i might do this at the weekend um uh, we'll see but i just i wanted to share it with you and hopefully i can share it with you finish the next time um moving on to knitting works in progress i've got two the first one is one that i cast on because i needed something easy to knit while i was um at knit night last week and i went out some other time like oh yeah i got my at the weekend i got my COVID booster and so I needed to get something just in the waiting room or something and the main project I'm currently knitting on I was at a point where um, I needed to like sit and think and watch a video tutorial on how to do something and it was just not possible for me to carry it around so I cast something else instead and that something else is the um, unarmored defense cow by Cat Weaver formerly known as um, Heather and Hops and I will put a picture of what it looks like. And so the yarn that I am using for this is yarn by um, the Border Mill, which is a mill in the border region of Scotland. And a yarn that I bought last summer at a yarn festival. And this is the label, um, here it is. The Border Mill, 100% alpaca. This is on the other side. I really like um, the little art here and it was a different art for each color of yarn and it's really, really pretty. So it's 100% alpaca and the shade that I've got is Distressed Oatmeal, um, 100 grams for 210 meters, which is the pattern called for, she used another yarn, but that was 230 meters, I believe. So I thought it was close enough. And this is what the yarn looks like. It is really, really nice. It says distressed oatmeal, which to me is more of a beige color, but this is like a warm gray, which I'm really happy with. And I've only done <laughs> part of the, um, the necks, the, the, yeah, the neck, the color, um, which was, it's perfect. It's, it's one by one ribbing and um, it was just easy to have uh, on the go, not to think about too much, just knit, I can stop whenever I want um, and know where to start again. So yeah, that was perfect for that. I think I'm about maybe a third of the length that I need because it's a, a turtleneck kind of thing. So I think I need to do like 20 or something centimeters and I'm at, I don't know, seven or eight or something. Oh, I've got fluff in my nose. Um, and uh, yeah, it's really fun. I'm using one of my stitch markers for the beginning of round. So we, I thought it went well with the, with the yarn and yeah, it's going really great. I'm still a bit debating on what size I'm going to make. So there's, um, three sizes. I have started the neck with the smaller size cause I want something that is quite close to my neck so that I can like zip up my coat and it's, it fits snugly. It's not bulky or whatever. Um, the length of the thing I'm going to probably make longer because the one recommended in the pattern for the size I'm making right now is appears to me to be quite short. So I might make it a bit longer. I'm also aware that alpaca grows, so I'll, I'll keep an eye on that. And then the width, I, I don't know uh, yet, because again, the one from the pattern seems a little bit narrow for what I might want, but also I've never, I've never had something like that. I've never worn something like that. Um, I guess Cat Weaver calls it a cow. I, I know people in North America tend to call it a dicky. Um, and yeah, I've, ne I've never, I've never had one. I've never worn one, so I don't really know 
um, what kind of fit I like because I've never tried. So um, the thing, the good thing is that like you knit, as, as you can tell, like you knit from the top down. So I think I'll just like try it on at regular intervals and make adjustment where I feel like I need to. And uh, yeah, it is really, it has been really enjoyable. The yarn, the yarn is really, really nice. It feels almost like it's soft, but it's also kind of smooth, if that makes sense. Like kind of buttery, if you know what I mean. And um, yeah, I really, really enjoy it a lot. I think it's going to be incredibly drapey. I think it's going to be really warm. Um, I was looking to get something like that for walking and hiking uh, in winter. Um, I like, I'm always, I don't know, I really love like scarves and shawls, but I find that like when I go out walking and then I put my scarf and then I want to, I, I like to have my scarf underneath my jacket, I have to zip my jacket over. And there's always a bit of like a bulk here that kind of like pulls on the jacket and make it fit kind of strangely. And then no matter how well I wrap my scarf, I feel like there's always like a hole here where the wind goes through, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I feel like something like that would be warm, no weird holes where the wind can go through and also not bulky. So. That's my hopes. We'll see if it actually works out that way. Um, but right now I'm really, really enjoying it. And um, yeah, if it works out, I might make another one for my husband because he said he would like to have a dickie. Uh, I think he's worn some before because he's um, he grew up in Canada and I think that's like something that people have there just because it's so much colder. Um, I know a lot of uh, people in Scan like it's quite a popular accessory in like Scandinavian countries again because it's so cold um so yeah I'm we'll see but right now I'm really really enjoying it the pattern is super well written um and yeah it's it's a fun knit it's a really fun knit so it's not my priority knit at the moment but it is my easy knit when I have to be somewhere that I can't bring the other one so that's work in progress number one and I'm keeping it in one of my new bags, actually. I, I'll touch on it later, but I'll, I'll show you. To, I'll show it to you. I created a new little design um, for my last um, for like a couple of weeks ago. I, I I added it to my website, and this is what it looks like. And I've called it uh, "Spring in the Garden," and yeah, it's just a little rabbit, and butterflies, daffodils. I'm really happy with it. It's actually been quite popular, and. Yeah, I really enjoy making it. So, yeah. Anyway, work in progress number one. I'm gonna have another sip of tea, but it's probably gone cold. And it's one of those teas, like do you know some teas, like if they're really hot, they're really good. If they start getting like lukewarm and cold, they just don't really taste like they taste like soap. And yeah, this tastes like soap now. Never mind. And so, work in progress. Knitting work in progress number two is my main um, knit at the moment, uh, especially because now I have reached past, I've gone past the point where I need to really follow in, like follow instruction to the point that I have to watch a um, tutorial online. And so I can just knit like super easily now. And it is, um, it is the Humlebi shawl by Fibertail. I'll put a picture here and I will show you mine. And this is what it looks like. So you'll have to forgive me because I have it on a bit of a short needle just because it makes it easier for me to um, knit on. But yeah, let me see if there's any way. At least I haven't stopped in the middle of a row, which that could have happened. But yeah, this is what <laughs> this is what it looks like. Let me see. Yeah, this is what it looks like. Not much. I'm going to try and spread out the stitches maybe around to show you. Right, so this is the, um, with all the stitch markers, it's the, um, the spine in the middle. And so it's that shawl that has the little bees, uh, which is the part that I needed the video for. And she, like, uh, Lerica of Fibertails makes a really nice video to explain how to make the bees. And they're really, they're not difficult to make, but they do require attention. So, um, yeah, I think they look really cute. And now I've just started um, 
you can see here there's a, a whole I've just started it above the bees there's a section where you do like um, little flowers which is just um, like a, a lace a basic lace section just eyelids and so I've just started this uh, last night and then once I do that then I move on to like the garter stitch section and just garter stitch until the end it's one of those patterns that um, uh, fiber tell does this quite a bit where you, you start at the longer end so you cast on all the stitches and then you decrease as opposed to like other shawl patterns where you start at the top and then you increase and then you end up with like 400 stitches uh, at the end um it's funny because if you look on Ravelry a lot of people will say that oh I really love the shawl but the cast on was a pain which I I kind of get because yeah casting on like 300 or 400 stitches or something is it's a bit of a process but honestly like I really like it because I have the energy um, and the enthusiasm for the project at this point a lot more than when I'm towards the end of a project and so I would rather do a long cast on and work on the very long rows that you know take longer when I'm still very excited by the project rather than having to do all of this at the end when I'm losing steam a little bit and um yeah it was it was a long cast on but then also it you know kind of set aside a couple hours and it's not difficult it's just a bit long and I really don't mind it it's also a cable cast on which I've never done before but I really like the look of it I don't know if it's gonna show oh yeah do you see like it's kind of like that lovely like sort of twist or I don't know it's really really lovely um there's also it hasn't been blocked yet but there's also like a little pico thing which is quite nice because it also like it's sort of gives a little bit of a rhythm to the cast on and it also makes it very easy to count your stitches and know where you're at because you don't have to count every stitch you can just count like the little pico one and know where you're at so i think it's really really smart construction and yeah i'm enjoying it a lot i really am enjoying it it's the first time that i make a shawl for myself i've made one before but it was a gift for my mom and yeah i'm really excited to have this one. I've also used some of my stitch markers and progress keepers. Oops, this one has flipped around. Come on, little one. There we go. So yeah, I went and got all my progress keepers that had keepers that had little flowers on it because I thought it was appropriate for a project with little bees. This is um, at the start. I have the same at the end, and. Yeah, it's really fun. So I did, uh, I'll talk about the yarn in a second, but I made one modification when I started based on the recommendation of like a lot of people who had made it on Ravelry in their like notes. Um, and basically what I did is that I added two repeats on either side of the like spine of the shawl. Uh, just because uh, a few people said that the shawl tended to be on the smaller size side and I guess it doesn't necessarily show in the pictures on the pattern because it looks quite nice and big on the designer but I think she's also quite a small person um, and so a lot of taller people or maybe more average height people seem to find it a bit small for their taste like you can absolutely enjoy a, a smaller shawl but I wanted something a bit bigger so I did what they recommended and I just added two repeats on either side of the of the spine and so that means that I have um, two more bees on, on, either, on either side which is fine it's not like it's I guess an extra like 20 stitches or so or like 40 stitches total and it's, it's completely fine and um, yeah I'm really enjoying it I didn't swatch I'm I don't really swatch for uh, shawls i used the i think it's four millimeter needles whatever is recommended in the pattern and i have plenty of yarn so i'm not i have way more yarn than i need so i'm not worried about um running out if i were concerned i would have swatched but i'm really not speaking of running out of yarn the yarn that i use or that i am using is a cone <laughs> and uh so i had offered or some people had asked me before or in the past to if I could maybe compare 
yarn cones because I, I tend to use quite a, a few cones of yarn. I enjoy it. And so I said, yeah, no problem. And I looked at what I had and it turned out that I didn't have a whole super soft cone, which is quite a popular one. So I, I think it's important to include it in the comparison, but I didn't have one at home and I'd never used one before. So um, I ordered one. Thank you for enabling me. Um, and I decided to use it for, I ordered one specifically for the shawl. And so this is the one that I have. Obviously it's quite small now because I've wound off about like 200 and something grams off of it for the shawl. But um, yeah, it is, it looks a bit brighter on the camera right now. The color is more um, the one that you see on the, the side that's in the shade. And it is called uh, Brass. It's holds super soft, 100% wool in the shade brass, and I think those are 50% Shetland and 50% Merino. I'm really enjoying it. Um, I know some people have said that they find those cones to be a bit, the yarn on those cones to be a bit um, stringy or feeling like straw or something like that, to the point that some people have gone to um, have chosen to wash the yarn first, so they've like got gotten a lot of it out, made a big loop, washed it, dried like dried it, and then like uh, caked it, um, which is cool. Like if that's something you want to do, uh, go for it. I think it it also helps because you will see the how it blooms and everything. Personally, I I don't have that problem. I don't. It is it is not. Um, you can tell there's a bit of spinning oil on it, not very much at all. Like it's not like your fingers are greasy or anything. Nowhere near that Jesse Rainey cone that I use for my husband's single malt sweater. Um, but it is, it is not smooth or it's not like slippery. So it doesn't, for me, it doesn't slide smoothly through my finger. There's a bit of a grip, which um, I like because it means that the stitches they grip and there's at some point in the pattern where you have to sort of like get stitch off and that means that you don't think that your whole thing doesn't unravel um so it's quite grippy when you knit it i have a feeling that it's going to be a lot lot softer and smoother once it's washed um i'm also holding it double for this pattern because those cones are fingering weight or light fingering and the pattern calls for dk so the fact that it's grippy a little bit means that it doesn't really happen, you know, when you hold something double and then you just catch one loop in your stitch. That doesn't really happen because the, the two strands kind of stick together. Um, the only thing is that um, I'm going to try and show you. I have to uh, change a little bit the way I hold my yarn um, in my fingers because it doesn't, it's not slippery. So it doesn't like, I guess they just glide through my fingers the way other yarns do. And so basically I... Um, I usually hold my yarn like this. I don't know if you can see. So I have a loop, a loop on, on the pinky finger here. And here it means that I have to pull too much with this yarn because it's not, it's kind of grippy. And so what I do is that I hold my yarn in this specific case, the way I hold it for crochet, which is I hold it like that. I don't do the loop here. The other fingers are basically the same, but I don't do the loop here and that just solves it perfectly. My tension is just fine. It's not an issue at all. And also it doesn't, it doesn't mess up with my muscle memory, I guess, in, in a way, because I can easily switch between this project where I hold my yarn like this and then my other project when I, I loop around my pinky um, without any issues. Like, yeah. It's just fine. So yeah, maybe just something to um, keep in mind, I guess. But on it personally, I don't feel the need to wash the yarn first. I'm actually quite excited because I've never used holes before. I am now making this shawl, but I haven't swatched before. So the way the yarn behaves and blooms and softens when it's washed, um, when it's washed, um, it's gonna be a great surprise for me when I wash the finished shawl and I'm really excited for that. I'm not concerned that it's going to do anything bad to it or anything. I'm just, I'm excited. I don't know, you know, you find excitement where you can. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's my Humble Bee shawl. I'm really 
this is my main project right now and because I've reached the point where I don't really have to look at the patterns anymore um, I'm just knitting on this primarily unless I need to be somewhere where I have to have something small with me um, but yeah like it a lot the, I really 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 love the color I think it's a bit more yellow than the color that uh, the, de the designer used in the pattern but it's that same sort of like um, I don't know, kind of that like tarnished gold kind of thing. It's it's a really beautiful color, and I have quite a bit of yarn left. So I don't know. I don't think I don't think I caked up everything that I need for the shawl. I might need to cake up a little bit more, but not very much. And after that, I think I will have like maybe two hundred and fifty grams left of that. And I also have a fingering brown yarn. Um, merino from wooly knit their their merino cones it's it has the color of like dark chocolate or something and i think which i don't really know what to do with it and i wonder if i used one strand of that brown yarn and one strand of that and make a lento that is marled i think it could look really nice so um yeah we'll see that's that's for a future time all right so that is all my finished object and I will now move on to acquisition. Let's just have a sip of soapy tea. All right, acquisitions. I have one yarn and two fabrics. So let's start with the yarn. And oops, and I just threw it on the floor. Never mind. And the yarn is this. Um, I really like it. It's you can. Read. So it's Woolly Mammoth Fibre Co. yarn. If you follow Emma of Woolly Mammoth on Instagram, you will know that she recently released a shawl pattern. I think it's her very first knitting pattern called the Fernie Corner Shawl, and she had kits for that. I really like the pattern. I've also really been wanting to use Emma's yarn for a while. I just didn't really have a project in mind. I didn't really know what I wanted to do, and so I didn't order the yarn up until now, up until she did those kits. And I was like, that's so perfect. I really like the shawl. That's the perfect way for me to try her yarn, to support her, because I'm, I'm, I really enjoy her podcast and her work and I wanted to support her. And so I got myself this beautiful kit to make the shawl. So um, this is her um, BFL Gotland base, 350 gra uh, meters per 100 grams, four ply. Um, and so yeah, so the gray, so all of her kits had a skein of the gray, which is the undyed uh, natural one, and then a skein of a different color. And I chose this natural brown color called Winter Bracken. And I think they're I think they're gonna look really nice together. And I think I'm gonna keep it the way the pattern is. I'll I'll have put a picture of the pattern, but I think I'm gonna do the main part in grey and then the lace section in brown. I toyed with the idea of switching it around but I think I like that better so yeah I will keep you posted. I don't really know when I'm going to cast this on but um, I will keep you posted. It's quite soft and I think it's going to be quite drapey and yeah I'm really excited. I'm really excited. I've been I've been wanting to get some woolly mammoth yarn for quite a long time and just never really did and this just felt like the, the perfect time like perfect time perfect yarn perfect pattern so yeah really excited about that so that is my one yarny acquisition and then i have two fabric acquisition so one is not very exciting but i'm going to show you anyway it is this black fabric and it is a cotton jersey so it is a fabric that is a lot more similar to the white t-shirt that i was showing you uh in the previous episode it is uh let me see it is a bit, it is thicker than the t-shirts that I just showed you. And I think it's medium weight possibly. And I mean, it's not very exciting. It's just like white cotton stretchy fabric. But what I would like to make with it is leggings. So I like to wear uh, just black cotton leggings at home. It's very nice, very comfy. But the one that I have that I bought um, in, in shop, well, they've been worn a lot. <laughs> and so they're getting kind of, some of them have like little holes in them and also they're just kind of losing their shape 
uh, not because they were bad quality, but just because they've been worn and washed so much. So uh, rather than buying some new ones, I thought I was going to try and to make some myself because apparently leggings are very easy to make. So <laughs> I will put that uh, to the test. And I don't now off of the top of my head, I don't remember the name of the pattern that I want to use, but I will put a picture here of the pattern that I want to use. And basically it's like a, a simple legging that has quite of a wide um, belt area. I guess or hem or whatever like around the the, the tummy and um, I like that better because I feel like the having something quite thick and wide like that works really well to basically prevent the leggings from slipping down but also doesn't necessarily require an elastic and I'm not a big fan of elastics at the waist I find that it's kind of hard I'm sorry there's so outside the window is a park and there's a pheasant that is just running across the park and I've never seen pheasants so close to the houses. It looks really nice. It's, you know those male pheasants that have all the beautiful colors, but what is it doing here? And there's also people walking their dogs and the dogs are not always on the lead. Um, all right, we're gonna have to keep an eye on that. <laughs> just make sure that the pheasant is okay and doesn't get hurt or anything, but I guess it's here because it's found some nice food probably um but yeah anyway end of the pheasant interlude uh yeah so I'll, I'll have put a picture here of the leggings that i want to do and yeah i like the wide sort of like belt kind of situation rather than a thin one with an elastic because i don't know it's just i don't like elastic at the waist it just feels very um constricting to me and not very comfortable so yeah, I will report back on that. I bought fabric just to make the one because I wasn't really sure that one, I would like the fabric, two, that I would like a pattern, that it would fit me, that it would work and everything. So I just bought fabric to do the one, but if it works out, then I will buy more fabric and just make another, I don't know. I wear them every day, maybe if I make five, so I have like one per day of the weekend then I can just do a wash. Um, that might be what I'll do, so. Yeah, that was acquisition, fabric acquisition number one. And then fabric acquisition number two is this, these actually two fabrics that go together um, because I want to make myself a proper pajama. So I've, I've got a few trips planned in April where I'm going to be sharing a hotel room with like my sister or friends or family or things like that. And um, I just wanted to have a nice pair of pajamas for that because I don't really have pajamas at the moment. I just wear like either like old, very old leggings or then I sleep in like a really old oversized t-shirt of my husband and then like underwear. So um, yeah, I thought it would be nice to have a decent pair of pajamas. Again, again, I don't really know. I don't remember now the top of my head the, um, the name of the pattern. It's the same brand as for the leggings. So I will put a picture here of the pattern that I intend to use. The pattern has long sleeve. I'm going to make short sleeves, but I'm also I'm going to make the full length um, bottoms. I know some people have made it in shorts, but I'm going to make the full length. And the way I intend to do that is that the t-shirt, the top is going to be made of this blue fabric. Again, it's just cotton jersey. It's really, really soft. It's going to be great for a pajama. So I'm going to make um, the top is going to be that blue. But then around the sleeves and like the cuff and then at the neck I'm gonna do I'm gonna use the other fabric and then the bottom of the fabric I'm gonna use for the bottom and for the bottom I'm gonna use this fabric but the cuffs at the ankles I'm gonna use the blue fabric just to like matchy matchy but yeah and so this is the bottom fabric which is like my favorite I think it looks so cute it's got sheep on it so yeah this is what I have and I bought them from the so I bought those from Minerva which is an online fabric store in the UK although I think they deliver abroad and it's uh, a brand of fabric that I don't remember the name of do they have it on there uh, no I can't see it sometimes they have it on the side on the Never mind. Um, but it's it's their same. It's the same brand of fabric. So they usually when they have patterned fabric, they have 
um, solid that match, like the colors match. So if you look together, like the, the blue of the top is the same blue as in the flowers or the, the butterfly here. So it really matches and I think it's going to look quite nice. So yeah, I'm excited for that. This fabric is washed and ready to be um, cut and sewn. Uh, I need to print out the pattern. I actually need to buy the pattern, I think. I need to print out the pattern and then um, make it. <laughs> it's 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 very easy. It's stretchy fabric. It's like two, like the trousers or like the bottoms are basically, I think like, like one leg is one piece, the other leg is one piece of fabric. And then you have like a belt and little cuffs and that's it. I think it's going to go really quickly and yeah, I'm excited. I hope it works out the way I see it in my mind and I will definitely show it to you in the next episode because I'm going to need to wear it before the next episode. So um, yeah, that is the last of my acquisitions. Um, what comes next? Uh, I will talk very briefly about like shop news uh, if you're interested like very briefly like i said i um released a new design called spring in the garden so you've got the bag like this that i showed before that is available in this is the small one and there's also the medium and the large one and then there is the notions pouch that matches there it is and then there's also stitch markers that matches. I'll put a picture of the stitch markers because it's kind of hard to show um, on camera. But basically you have um, oh, sorry. Oops, sorry, one bunny, a little bunny bum, two bunnies. And then you've got, let me see, what is this? A butterfly that is also on the bags a daffodil that is also on the bag and then a a little carrot but yeah I, I will put a picture here so all of this is in the shop now along with all the other designs um and yeah i will i just finished up um a batch of orders so i will restock more bags and everything um when i upload this podcast so if you wanted something there should be stuff in available in the shop if not please feel free to email me we can always work something out um and uh yeah so that's all the shop news um for this time and I guess it's been a bit over an hour so I'm gonna wrap it up but of course before leaving I will announce the giveaway winner of last episode's giveaway the winner of the giveaway was going to the price I mean is going to be as I announced it the last time um, this beautiful skein of red yarn by beehive yarn called Raven Red, it is 100% Superwash Merino DK, 115 grams for 230 meters, this, and then a set of stitch markers of their choice from my website. Um, and so without further ado, I have it on a little piece of paper. I did a uh, random comment picker, so it's like something on the internet, just like just picks any random comment that was left below my previous um, video and uh, picks one. And so the person who won is Lulu Alex from Canada. I'll write your name uh, on the screen. Congratulations um, for winning the giveaway. If you can please email me, I think the best would be for you to email me. I will leave my email below. It's also on my website. Um, if you can please have a look at my website, the link is down in downstairs, downstairs. The link is down below. Uh, have a look and choose your stitch markers that you would like. And please email me with the stitch markers that you would like, the fastenings that you would like on your stitch markers. So you can choose between, it's on the website, but you can choose between jump rings or that are like stitch markers or lobster class, which are like progress keepers or like a mix of the two. Just let me know whatever you would like. And also let me know 
the address where you would like me to um, ship it and I will do that for you. Um, I know there's been like bots and spams and things going around. I don't think my podcast has been affected. I have checked regularly that no weird comment was appearing telling you that you'd want something and that whatever. Um, but yeah, please be mindful of that. I will not, I'll, I won't comment uh, to the person who won ever. I will announce it live as I'm talking to you right now on the podcast. And then I will ask you that you email me. All right. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. So congratulations again for uh, winning the giveaway. Uh, I'm assuming your name is Alex or Lulu Alex. I don't, I don't know. Um, maybe it's a play on your name. Um, congratulations. And thank you everyone for participating. Uh, there will be more giveaways in the future because I'm sure we'll cross more milestones. And thank you very, very much for watching. Thank you for your patience because I know it's been a little while since the last episode. I hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next one. Bye!